A strange thing happened this week, starting on Tuesday, and as I record, it is still happening. On Tuesday at 11.16 in the morning, a woman named Shamira Imber posted on her Facebook page, quote, And now Good Tuesday has come. Farewell. I feel a need to say goodbye. I lived with you and among you with enormous love, great creativity, and constant defiance. I say goodbye at peace, calm and comfortable, surrounded with support and great love. I had the good fortune of a wondrous family and wonderful friends. Thank you for the life with you and among you. Farewell. End quote. Seeing the post, the journalist named Shani Nachshoni phoned Shamira Imber, who agreed to be on the radio one last time. Most of us already associate Shamira Imber with the radio. She was, among other things, a news presenter and a DJ for most of 50 years. And to most of us, her voice is as familiar as an old friend's on the phone. Here's what she said to Shani Nachshoni. <laughs> We are speaking now three hours before the nurse comes to administer the treatment to give me gentle, pleasant sleep as much as possible until the end. I wanted to do it even earlier, but because of the holidays, it didn't work out. By this time, social media was already filled with tributes to Shamira Imber. With Here's the Shamira Imber I knew stories and decades of photographs and videos, by early afternoon on the top of the hour radio news bulletin, the fact that Shamira Imber was fixing to die was a lead story. By mid-afternoon, the Wikipedia entry for Shamira Imber was already amended to include her death, and more and more of the posts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram were now eulogies, until another post came up on Shamira Imber's Facebook page, and it said, quote, This is Shamira's daughters, Moore and Shelley. Thank you for all your good words. Ima is now receiving palliative sedation to ease the pain she has been suffering for some time. When the time comes, we will publish an official announcement. Again, we thank you for the warm embrace. Sometime after that, Ofer Aderet, who writes the obituaries for Haaretz, tweeted, quote, It has already been 12 hours that Shamira Imber is challenging the concept of death. This year makes 10 years in my job as a eulogist. I thought I'd seen everything, but I have not yet come across a case like this before, end quote. Shamira Imber was as much a phenomenon in life as she was this week in approaching death. To grow up in the Yeshuv and then Israel when she, Shamira Imber, grew up in the 1940s and 50s with the name Imber, That already set her apart. When Shamira Imber was a kid, most every kid here knew about her great uncle, really her grandfather's cousin, Naftali Herz Imber, a poet from the Ukraine who moved to Ottoman Palestine in his 20s, publishing in Jerusalem his first book of poems in 1886, containing a poem called Tikvatenu, describing Imber's pride at the establishment of the colony of Petach Tikva. And the poem was put to music and became an anthem of the Zionist organization and then spread beyond that group until in 1933 at the 18th Zionist Congress in Prague. It was adopted as the official anthem of the entire Zionist movement. And 15 years after that, in 1948, it became Israel's national anthem, Hatikva. A while ago, in an interview, Shamira Imber told what it was like to grow up the descendant of so significant a man. <laughs> You haven't asked me what it was like to be an Imber as a girl. Then everyone knew who Naftali Herz Imber was. So it was very fun because I always got attention until one day I said enough with the appreciation that comes to me by virtue of my ancestors or grandfathers or cousins of grandfathers. The time has come for me to make something worthwhile of myself. The first thing that Shamira Imber did to make something worthwhile of herself was to leave the country after the army, finding her way to Berkeley, where, according to a gossip column that ran in 1970 in Oriav Neri's indispensable, somewhat yellow weekly news magazine Ha'olam Hazeh, she joined a coven of witches of the sort, the paper said, that Roman Polanski depicted in Rosemary's Baby. By Shamira Imber's own more reliable report, at Berkeley she became a hippie with all that went with that. When she came back to Israel, she registered to study theater at Tel Aviv University, attracting attention because of her charisma and also, I think, because she was and is extraordinarily, hauntingly beautiful. 
That may be why she was profiled in a Mariv article about university students that described her having, quote, an original appearance, two braids, each a meter long, and wearing a blouse with giant sleeves as wide as sailboat sails, end quote. This was in 1969, before many hippies had been sighted in Tel Aviv, and when the reporter asked her about her plans for the future, she answered, I don't think about the future, while twirling one of the five rings she had on a single finger. Asked if anything is missing from Israeli university life, she said, quote, Yes, definitely. I miss the rebellion against the old-fashioned curriculum. It bothers me that students are not more involved and an outstanding part of determining what we ourselves study here, end quote. By the next year, Imber was in the first Hebrew production of Hair with Tzvika Pick playing a hippie each night on stage. Two years after that, she was back in the papers in a profile headlined, quote, any profession is kosher to pay for studies. So says the student Shamira Imber, who worked as a hostess in a nightclub to pay for her studies, end quote. The article reports that Shamira Imber worked at the quote unquote Yellow Club and the King's Club and at Hofi's place. It reports of Shamira Imber, quote, she worked alongside, among others, homosexuals and lesbians, and occasionally famous people even came into the clubs drunk, end quote. But Shamira Imber insisted there's nothing wrong with such places and that students ought to be countercultural, quote, students in Israel need to be a united antithesis to the establishment, like they are in France and the U.S., in order to create a more healthy synthesis in this country's universities, end quote. Acting didn't hold Shamira Imber's interest, not for long anyway, and after she finished university, she applied for a training course in radio announcing at the Israel Broadcast Authority. And she got in, which was not easy, and she found what would be, in one way or another, her profession for the rest of her life. Her voice is gorgeous, deep, and filled with authority, and it is at once both cool and warm. השעה השתיים, והנה החדשות מפי שמירה אימבר. As a news reader, Imber was the voice of steady propriety, decorum, and official legitimacy, which I think was part of her. She was, after all, a descendant of the author of the national anthem, but it was not all of her. In January 1975, Mari ran a story on page two headlined, Announcer Shamira Imber Fired, that told how Imber had been hosting a live radio show on the second station, Reshet Bet, on the prior Saturday night, and that she said, quote, what I wanted to tell you is that here in the studio, there are two lavatories, if I can say that word on the radio, end quote. After that, she admitted to listeners that she was, quote unquote, a little drunk. The next morning, she was given notice, but by the day after that, the labor union of radio workers came to Shamira Imber's defense, and eventually the firing was undone. Later, Shamira Imber was disciplined for sneaking a political message into her broadcasts. The news sometimes begins, this is the voice of Israel from Jerusalem, Shalom, now to the news. By running together the words shalom and now, Imber created the impression that she was saying, this is the voice of Israel from Jerusalem, peace now, after the pro-peace protest movement that started in the late 1970s. Years later, Shamira Imber was again disciplined for saying on the air at two in the morning after the news broadcast that in a personal vein, she was looking forward to her husband getting out of the hospital where he was being treated for some ailment so that both of them would together be, quote unquote, free to fuck. <laughs> when the other broadcaster in the studio protested, she said, why do it and not say it? Adding that, okay, she'd say it differently. She hoped that her husband would be free to fulfill the important mitzvot, the religious commandments, that he is commanded to fulfill, meaning, of course, conjugal relations. When the Israel Broadcast Authority finally, in 1977, started a pop music station, Reshet Gimel, having been shamed into airing rock and roll by Abi Natan's pirate Voice of Peace station broadcasting from a transmitter on an old cargo ship brought partly with the support of John Lennon and Yoko Ono, Shamira Imber got one of the first shows, Dvarim Tovim it was called, Good Things. And I found in a paper from 1977 a note saying she played Roxy Music, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, and Soft Machine, which was not the stuff you often heard over the radio while holding onto a strap on an Egged bus. Though, at the same time, Shamira Imber's show was hardly Woodstock or Altamont. It was some odd in-between thing, as though it couldn't decide if it was meant for teens with their hair growing out or for their grandparents with their hair falling out.
תן לעצמך דברים טובים לשעה. אותנו, מ-10 עד 11 בגימל. שמעון פרנס, שמירה אינבר, דברים טובים. הרכב גימל, ושלום רב לכם המאזינים, 10 ו-6 דקות וחצי. דברים טובים בחזרה על מפת השידורים של גימל, וזו בעצם שנת השידורים. There was always that odd tension in Shamira Imber. Yesterday I came across a video from 1975 of Shamira Imber sitting on a boulder at the edge of the Kinera at the Sea of Galilee, reading aloud the poems of the poet Rachel. דרך מכאוב ודרך ענל, יד ענקים זדונה ובוטחת, יד מתבדחת, שמה לאל. כל אורחותיי הליז והדמיה, פחד תמיר מיד ענקים. למה קראתם לי חופי הפלא? And in the video, Shamira Imber is wearing a white frock that looks almost biblical. Her feet are bare just above the lapping water of the Sea of Galilee. Her hair braided into two great cords that reach down below her waist and spill onto the rock. She looks like a biblical prophet, and she looks like a flower child, and she looks like a chalutza, a pioneer, and she looks like the poet Rachel. And in the whole thing, reverence and rebellion are braided so tight that you cannot pick them apart. Not too long after she started playing Roxy music on the air, Shamira Imber also got the job of announcing for the television and radio the annual Yom Ma'ut Independence Day ceremonies from Mount Herzl in Jerusalem, the most watched and maybe the most formal and formulaic ceremonies of the Israeli calendar, attended by the president and the prime minister and the cabinet and the Supreme Court and Knesset members and generals and chief rabbis. <laughs> Rav David Hartman used to say that the story of Zionism is the story of a kid who screams at his parents, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I am running away and never coming back, and then slams the door but stays on the inside of it. Once in an interview describing her famous ancestor, Naftali Herz Imber, Shamira Imber said, He was also a bastard. He went to New York and he wrote there one day he publicized an announcement that he had died, all just so that he could come to the synagogue afterwards and hear what people had to say about him. Shamira Imber told how Naftali Herz Imber was secretary to a radical mystic adventurer member of British Parliament, Lawrence Oliphant, who set up housekeeping with his wife Alice in the Holy Land, and it was not long before Naftali Herz Imber and Alice were having an affair. Shamira Imber said that she saw in herself some of this side of Naftali Herz Imber. She said she could also be a bastard, that only in the very limited sense of, like her great uncle or whatever, she could be the voice of official decision. Them, and at the same time, be in constant rebellion against it. Last week, like her uncle, for a short time, Shamira Imber got to hear what people had to say about her in eulogy. And mostly what we had to say is that we loved her for showing what is easy for most of us to forget, that you can be both things enchanted by the establishment we have established here and also committed up to our very last bit of energy to challenging that establishment until we see it change. Here is the very end of the very last time that Shamira Imber read the hourly news broadcast.